Hello everybody, welcome back to the fish room, nice to see you again. Well, not the fish room, near the fish room. The fish room's there, behind this wall. Um, right now, I'm organising some fibreglassing supplies. So, we've got some epoxy resin, some hardener, some chopped strand matting that we can cut up, some tools, mixing stuff, gloves, all the good stuff. I'm just trying to get it all prepared. I'm not going to make this a video to show you how to fiberglass because I have no idea how to fiberglass. I'm going to basically follow the instructions and suggest you do the same too. And we'll see if we can make some kind of dent in repairing Megatank. So this is picking up from a video, a couple of videos back where Megatank got a leak. Megatank is my DIY eight foot by four foot by three foot self build leaky piece of shit fish tank. This is a swimming pool that I bought off Amazon to house the fish that were in here while we fix it. So the problem, as I think I've found it, is that we've used liquid rubber on this, so say what you will about liquid rubber, but the problem seems to be where I've tried to put the glass and seal it with silicon between the glass and the liquid rubber, it hasn't grabbed, it hasn't stuck properly. I can find bits where it's come apart and I think that's where the leak's coming from because it's concentrated over in that corner over there. So that's what we're going to try and fix, and we're going to try and fix it just by using the epoxy resin fiberglass matting round the bits where the glass touches the wood. And then we'll cover that over with some more liquid rubber, and then come back in a few weeks and fix it again when that inevitably doesn't work. Which takes me on to my biggest point in the video. I really do appreciate all the comments I get on all my videos, but people seem to be getting more and more irate at me in the way that I'm dealing with Mega Tank and the way that I'm trying to fix it, that I'm not following their suggestion. So if you, dear viewer, have made the suggestion and I haven't followed it, I do apologise. I have probably read it, but I literally cannot do everything everyone suggests. I've had suggestions from, you have to rip it all out and start again, you idiot, to, have you tried super glue? Or a bit of duct tape will sort that out. Or, why don't you fiberglass that little bit? Or why don't you sand it back to bare metal and fiberglass that bare wood or whatever? Every single extreme of suggestion has been made. I cannot follow all of them. And I don't know which one of you is an expert or which one of you is just mouthing off. So unfortunately I can't, I'm just doing it my way. And if there's any benefit that can come from this, it's follow along if it works great, do it yourself. If it doesn't work, great, now you know not to do it yourself. If you already know not to do it, I'm not hurting you, I'm only hurting myself. So if you are an expert, by all means, reach out, send me an email, tell me, I'll come and do that for you. I'll charge you handsomely for the price. I don't mind. I can't keep up with all the comments telling me to do a hundred different things for the same... It's just, it's mind-boggling. So we have to just... Make an allowance. If you have suggestions, please, I don't, I'm not trying to put you off making suggestions for what to do here, but if you have suggestions, please make them, but understand, I can't follow every suggestion that's made. I have to weigh them up against other things, and whatever works with my warped brain, if that makes sense to me, I'm probably going to go with that one. I'm probably going to try that one. So, what I think I found out about what the problem is, you might be sitting there going, God, this guy's such a moron, he doesn't get it, why is he not listening to me? I apologise. Eventually, once I've ruled out every other possibility, I probably will get there. But I'm trying to make this as easy, simple as possible. And if you're in the middle of typing, well, doing it right the first time would have been the way to do it. You're right. You're right. I didn't. I, can't, I have no time machine. Can I borrow yours? So, well, I have looked at lots of suggestions from stripping it back to bare wood, sanding everything within a life. I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. I'd rather set it on fire. We're going to try these repairs rather than just start again. Um, if you've made suggestions such as putting in extra braces, yes, we might get there. When it was full, I was measuring the distance between the front and the back, for instance, constantly to see if there was any give whatsoever, and there wasn't. So I don't think that's the problem. It might be your problem if you're trying to do this. My problem appears to be the silicon did not bond with the liquid rubber. So that's what we're going to try and address. And what I'm going to do is take this chop strand mat, cut it into strips, run that along the bottom and the two sides where the glass meets, soak it in the fiberglass epoxy resin, let it harden off. That should then give us a good solid seal and if the 
the glass isn't deflecting, if there isn't any movement, there's no reason why that shouldn't be the fix. I've lost count of how many times I've said this now, so I'm not going to say, and then everything will be fine, because we have no idea whether it will be fine or not. But I'm going to try it. I've got the various tools to get this into a nice, clean um, application. I've never done it before, so I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Follow the instructions, see what it says. Um, I bought this all as one kit, so everything should work together quite well. Um, it's just about dry enough, need to get a little bit more of a clean, and then we'll go and put it down and see what happens. So this is actually day two of the fiberglassing, resining. Basically, I've put down sheets like this around all the corners, sealed them in with the epoxy resin. Just trying to get it in as soaked in as possible. Um, these things, the fiberglassing tools, I thought I could get away with just a paintbrush or something, but these things have been brilliant. So if you're planning on doing this, I would definitely get the tools. These rollers just get things in. Make sure there's no air bubbles or anything like that. And it's worked really well and it has dried rock solid. So today I'm just going over with a second coat, uh, doing everything again. I think we'll be good, hopefully. We shall see, we shall see. Right, so this is taking a little bit longer than I expected. Um, we've now got various layers of epoxy, fiberglass, let that set, let that get in and properly cure. I've gone over it again with some liquid rubber as the top coat to seal in that. In theory, it's now fixed, but we will not know until we do a test fill. So that's going to happen now. Um, while I had it empty before I applied anything, I did a bit of a test fill and it leaked as soon as I got up to kind of this level. So my idea will be to fill it halfway, see if we can figure out one way or another whether or not it's worked. Again, I think the leak was because the um, the silicon under the glass hadn't cured or stuck, adhesed properly, um, and it had lifted and it had got under and come through the glass that way. So, fingers crossed, touch wood, all that kind of stuff, that shouldn't be a problem now. Lots of scope for investigation later as to why exactly this didn't work. I had lots of comments in the last video about, oh, you could try using Sikaflex, you could try use all different types of adhesives and different types of um, silicon, and many of them may be valid. Um, but all I can do is tell you what I have done. So we've gone with the fiberglassing, we've gone with another layer of um, liquid rubber around the glass. So both those applied around the glass while it's been emptied I've pulled it all out as far as I can which is not very far with this bleeding swimming pool here I can't see any evidence of any water anywhere else other than where it was coming through at the front so I've got to assume that's what it is um, but anyway let's get this cleaned up a little bit and we'll get a test fill started right that's it full it's only been full for a couple of hours but so far so good um, I've learned my lesson though, I'm not going to make any predictions but when I was doing my investigations and my test fills it was leaking almost immediately um, so we've at least made it better, even if it's not completely fixed um, Now the plan is I need to leave it for a few days testing, get it up to temperature I have to assume it's fine, and get it back in, get the fish back in and then clean up because the fish room is in a complete state of disarray. I can't, <laughs> I just can't move in here. There's no space, there's no floor space. I can't get at some of the tanks. So I'm having to feed things with really long uh, tweezers and uh, yeah, it's, I can't clean anything. It's just a complete disaster zone. So I, I want to get the fish back in there. And um, you might think no harm, no foul. We've fixed it, it's, it's back up and running. Unfortunately, I have lost one of the fish. So the Azure um, bass it went south quickly yesterday. Um, the snakehead was attacking it. I put in a bit of a divider. 
yeah, I came down this morning and it was it was gone. I mean, the, the water parameters and everything was fine. There's no getting away from it. This anytime you move a fish, especially a big fish, it's stressful. So I've no idea what this fish has been through and its previous home. And I'm not trying to write this off as a, oh, it was a rescue, so it was already damaged. But in truth, rescue fish are more difficult to care for because you are rescuing them. So it's gone through multiple moves. Um, and then I stressed it out because I had to move it because my tank gave in. So, completely honest, I don't know what the problem was. I can only chalk it down to just being those stressful moves. Um, sometimes when a fish is a bit weaker, another fish will say, right, now's my time and we'll have it. I did notice the snakehead going for it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm gutted. As always, it's a habit that I want to get out of losing fish. So that's not great. Um, so, it's what it is. I just wanted to be completely honest. Every other fish in the fish room, despite my best efforts, is doing really well. Um, Humphrey's in his own tank now. He's fine. He's happy. Well, that was a bad experiment to try and get Humphrey in the big tank. Um, so he's in my second biggest tank, my second normal, second biggest normal tank. Um, all the other fish are well, but I just really need to get cleaned up and get things back to some kind of normality so as I can get into my routines and schedules again. Yeah, because it's just disaster zone. I'll leave you with my final thoughts for this video anyway. You will come back and we'll have a look at the fish when we get them back in the big tank and hopefully it's still up and running. Click that subscribe button if you want to follow along with the disastrous journey. But yeah, it has not gone well. Um, often YouTube is full of experiences of how to do things and great successes. I'm aware that my channel recently has not been that. I'm sharing it works and all anyway, so if you can learn anything from it, br brilliant. If you just want to laugh at me, brilliant. It is what it is, this is my hobby. It's just not going well at the moment. And I'm hopeful that it will turn a corner. I kind of need this hobby to keep my own mental health good, so I'm, I'm hopeful for the future. I'm sure we will get back on top of it. I was obviously very upset in the last video with all the effing and jeffing, so as much as everyone thought that was funny, that was my, a true reflection of my feelings at the time. Uh, I have been struggling a bit of late, so I'm hopeful that we'll get things back on track and we'll have some more positive journeys, some positive stories for you in the future on this channel. Uh, if you want to be around for that. Future Graham here, I was just doing the edit for that video and realised I needed some B-roll from the fish room. So I went down to take that and show how messy it was. And Mega Tanks <laughs> leaking again. So f*** that, f*** this. Uh, it's really making me want to swear again. Uh, I've had it, I've had enough, I've had enough. It's not to be, I'm sure there are a million more things that I can do about it, but I just don't want to. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, tune in to the next video, because it'll either be me setting fire to the f***ing thing, or, oh, welcome to my guinea pig farm, or look at my massive snake tank, or something else that doesn't require the f***ing thing to be waterproof. So, not happy, not the way I wanted to end this video, I'm not sure whether there'll be another video, who knows, we'll see how we get on. Uh, anybody wants a giant snake head? Let me know in the comments. Bye. Come and join me on a Friday night, 9pm UK time, most Fridays. Do a live stream or click the subscribe button down below and you can follow along with all my various projects. I've kind of got half a dozen videos in a state of unfinishedness, so hopefully we'll get some of them out soon. Uh, and thank you for joining me and putting up with me and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.